Meanwhile, four minutes after the top of the hour, Tucker Carlson just got off the air. You phoned over Sean Hannity yesterday, so we were talking about this uh, last night, and as you were you, Donald Trump had his big speech on Wednesday. And since that time, there's so many misinterpretations, I believe, about what he said and what he didn't say, softening or not softening. And because of the perception, perhaps, he's got two people on his, uh, on his Hispanic council who have resigned, saying that they were misled by where Donald Trump was heading. But my sense is they weren't listening to the speech. Right, because the left is saying that Donald Trump wants to deport everyone, but that's not at all what he said in the speech. He basically said, I want to build the wall, and I want the bad guys to get out of the country. It may be that people watched the speech rather than read it. I mean, I had the advantage of reading the text of the speech and watching some of it. And actually, I don't think there's one thing in the speech that's inconsistent with American values, with right. American history, that is offensive to anybody, any sober-minded person who wants to put the interest of America above their own personal interest. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it was not an insane speech in any way, if but, you read it. But when you talk about the 11 million, that's one of the main focus for his Hispanic council. The 11 million here illegally, and he tiered it. He said, look, well, I'll tell you what, here's what he said yesterday on Laura Ingram's radio show. Oh, they're softening. Look, we do it in a very humane way, and we're going to see with the people that are in the country. Uh, obviously, I want to get the gang members out, the drug peddlers out. I want to get the drug dealers out. We want to, We get a lot of people in this country that you can't have, and those people will get out. And then we're going to make a decision at a later date once everything is stabilized. I think you're going to see there's really quite a bit of softening. Here's what you don't want to do. You don't want to create an incentive for more people to come here illegally, as we did 30 years ago in 1986 in the Reagan amnesty. We gave amnesty to 3 million and 11 million followed because they saw that once you got here, everything would be okay. No one would deport you. You don't want that to happen again. That's the first thing you want to prevent. Right. Uh, some interesting, a side story, political reporting that Donald Trump was not going to put in that Mexico was going to pay for the wall yeah. until he found out when he landed after meeting with the Mexican president that the Mexican president kind of broke his word and tweeted out, I I told Donald Trump, I'm not paying for that wall. So Trump's like, well, now I got to put in well, to the speech that you're paying for the wall, even though you don't know it yet. I don't think he means that he's going to like, that Mexico is going to cut a check to the United States and pay for it outright. I think there are ways that we can get them to pay for it by adding, what were you talking about yesterday? You were talking about adding taxes to. Well, I mean, they got a VAT tax in Mexico, uh, which we pay when we put our products there. Well, but things they don't like pay, that, yeah, we they can don't add pay it on. Right, but it exactly. doesn't, the cost of illegal immigration is so high. High yes. to us, so many billions of dollars every year. One hundred thirteen billion dollars a year. Exactly. That just slowing it down would pay for a wall. That's true. Right. So right. I think the press is totally ignoring the point. The core message of Trump's speech is: our immigration policy ought to serve America, not a small group of elites of which the press is a part, but like ordinary people. And right. the press is mad that the middle class is standing up and saying, "Wait, this isn't working for us." And I, their message to the middle class: shut up. It's laughable that Tim Kaine called said that. Uh, Donald Trump uh, uh, act choked in say, not telling the Mexican president I know. to use your vote for it. Really? This is the Tim Kaine that refuses to, he said because he didn't confront the Mexican president, refused to come on our show yesterday because he, I guess he projected the, uh, the questions would be too tough. And he's saying Donald Trump choked because when he first met the president of Mexico, and by the way, Donald Trump's not president yet, he didn't say, here's the invoice. Would Kaine be happier Tim? if Trump had yelled at the Mexican president? Right. Like, what does he want Trump to do? Tim <laughs> Kaine, we would love for you to come on our show. We called we called them so many times. You did. I personally called them. He wouldn't come on our show. He went on all. He did the whole round robin. He's the only person to never, not to take your but call. But guess who ever. is? Guess who did take my call? Guess who is? Coming Everybody on today? takes your call. Right there, Eric Trump. We're going to ask him about his dad's immigration plan. We're going to also talk to him about Matt Lauer. He's going to mod moderate the first forum, which is next Wednesday. It's going to be a military forum. So we'll ask him what he thinks about that.